Commissioner. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the next episode, episode 12 of our podcast, Plays Well With Others. As always, I am Andrew Moore, your host, and I am joined by my illustrious co-host, Jess Agnew. So, in episode 11, if you tuned in, if you haven't, go ahead and, and pause and, and go do that and then come back. But in episode 11, we talked about a couple of different things. In the first part of the episode, we talked really, and, and this is the, the name of the episode, where it came from, we talked about how to, as an individual contributor, keep your eyes on the prize, how to stay focused on important things more so than, than urgent things. And we, we dug into the, the concept of how that's really shared responsibility between your manager, who is supposed to be keeping, keeping you focused on, on, the, on the important things, on the vision, communicating that vision in a way that you understand how you, your, your day-to-day -day work or your tasks or how you choose to use your time impacts that vision. And it's also partially your responsibility to ensure that when you get invited to a meeting that you don't understand why you're there, you're, you're saying, you know what, I'm going to raise my hand and say, give me an agenda, or maybe I just don't yeah. show up and say, hey, I've got other things to do. Um, but that, that's really the, the key balance. We also talked about managing or, or developing relationships and how those relationships have particular behaviors or people have behaviors and predilections that mm -hmm. it's important to understand and know going into a, a social interaction so that you can, again, not only understand what's important, but also potentially influence what's important. And yes. there is just so much on both of those topics that we're, we're going to break them apart. So if you're doing the Choose Your Own Adventure Plays Well With Others podcast journey, you can now turn to page 73. <laughs> No, small joke. Um, there will be more content in the future, potentially more episodes or maybe something more coming with the, the relation, r relational aspect and how, how that fits into not only your professional lives, but also your personal lives. Today- <laughs> There's so much there. Yes, just, just gobs and gobs of content. So we're gonna set that on the back burner for now. You'll, you'll see it come back, so don't worry. But today we want to dig specifically into the, call it prioritization or execution of important versus urgent as a people leader or as someone that is responsible for developing some degree of, of vision and strategy. Mm -hmm. And th this is going to be the episode of Matrices. So go ahead and put your, your linear algebra hat on. <laughs> but Jess and I both have tools that that we've used in the past and continue to use and i actually published some some content or made a post on linkedin about this a couple of months back and one of the one of the key matrices or key key tools that i use to stay focused on what drives value or what what is really valuable for me to be doing is I think, I can't for the life of me remember where I found it. I think it was a, a CIO.com article or, or something years and years ago, but I had it taped to my desk. And now that I'm working from home, I don't have a printer at home. So it's, <laughs> it's just on my desktop over here, but on my digital desktop. But it outlines, and I'll share the post somewhere, um, maybe in the show notes, maybe also on LinkedIn again but it outlines a series of cadences or katas for what questions I should be asking myself. And they, they go daily, weekly, and monthly. And they're focused on four different categories, people, projects, process, and, and personal or me. So as an idea, every day I come in and sit down, maybe at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, I'm asking myself, you know, how is my how's my recruiting pipeline? How is my how's my bench? Do I have people that are wanting to come work for me, work with me, work at the company? Do I need to be developing more people that that want to come work here so that when I do have needs for a, a new software engineer that has Python experience, 
you know, that's not something that I look for every single day. But if I have somebody that I know, then I can make that phone call. Hey, hey, buddy, real quick, I got a project. You want to work on it? The projects, and this is where this is where Jess will will shine. But it's the question is, are my critical projects on track? So a lot of times as a people leader, you're not the one doing the specific project work. So you are in large trusting your team when they give you updates and and sometimes and I've, I'm, I've been guilty of this a lot you get into the habit of the team saying yep everything's good and then no more questions okay fine everything's good yeah I, I cringe a little bit at that because that's a really good way for a project to start going sideways where the accountability is not really being pressed yes and jess and i have both been bitten by that Hundred percent. I think every leader has. Yes, everything's good, and you realize that at some point, good means different things to different people. But <laughs> that's a good way to say that. <laughs> sitting down and asking myself, are those projects on track? And and that, that's just a, a habit to get into. Do I need mm -hmm. more information? If you feel uncomfortable asking a question, that's probably a good indicator that you need to ask. Yep. Um. Also daily, and I'm not going to read this to you, but there, there are a few that I want to call out that are important. Um, so the rest of daily is kind of just focused on process. What do I need to do today to keep the, to keep, to keep the train rolling? But mm -hmm. there's in weekly and monthly, this is where a lot of leaders fall flat. So you get into the habit of coming to work every day. You, you're going to your meetings. You're quote unquote doing what you're supposed to do. But where you, where you often fall down is looking out strategically. So you get down in the weeds, you get into the fire, yeah. and you forget to look, look up and look around and see what else needs to happen. And some of these are, like monthly, any projects on the back burner that I should start. So things that I need to be prepared for, I've built the backlog, and if you followed all of our preachings for the last 11 episodes, you've built a backlog, <laughs> you're following the agile ceremonies, the execution machine is functioning and working well, and you can stop there. You can get to that point and say, you know what? It's working, so I don't need to do anything else, right? Well, or you could take a look at what the future looks like and start feeding into that process, yes. the things that you want the output in the future. Exactly, and when you get into that mindset, that that one is an example is listed in the monthly column but when you get into that mindset you really start thinking like a strategic leader you start identifying yeah. opportunities for improvement in areas where you're like ah, that really could be better and you can start working on it you're feeding the machine you are reevaluating the machine as as most of you know machines need maintenance they need parts exchanged they need move to a different part of the shop so we can't rest on our laurels and assume that everything's going to be okay forever because it's okay today right. well and my favorite type of leader to work with are those very vertical leaders that they don't mind getting their hands dirty and getting down and understanding the nitty-gritty of an individual process um, because i think that that broadens your capability for empathy and collaboration within your organization because you know we've talked about this in another episode it's hard to respect someone's role if you haven't walked a mile in it, if you don't understand what it is they're doing or why they're crucial to the success of your organization. It's easy to dismiss them because you don't understand it. So by being a vertical leader and being down in the weeds, you start to garner that understanding. You understand who and what and why for all the different roles that you support or that you you know have within your care as a leader. You can respect them and, and appreciate them, but that doesn't preclude you from needing to be also high up, right? That's the point of being a vertical leader is you can go down low, but you also pull yourself high up. And those are two very different ways of thinking. And it can be difficult to pull yourself up out of the, in the weeds. Um, but if you don't, you run the risk of micromanaging, um, getting lost in the moment to moment items and losing sight of future items of just busy being a busy work leader rather than a strategic leader so moving yourself higher is incredibly important and what andrew's talking about gives you a tool to help you schedule that 
force yourself to do it by just this is how my calendar plays out. These are the things that I do on a monthly cadence, on a weekly cadence, etc. So it's a really valuable tool just to kind of manage your own time. Well, I can't tell you how bad it feels to be in that position where you look at your calendar. I think we all do it. You've all got your calendar on your phone, right? So you wake up in the morning, you roll over, you say, what What do I have to do today? Oh, and it's just blue all the way down from, you know, depending on what time zone you, you're in and what where your colleagues are, you know, 7.30 to 5.30. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's miserable. But if you follow this this approach and if it's not exactly this approach if you're sure what looking at you? that like from last episode that that entrepreneurial mindset what do i actually need to get done what are mm -hmm. things that i can delegate what is what is the thing that only i can do today and focusing on that focusing on really driving value then yeah. those meetings start going away and they start looking a little bit different and you actually have a purpose so if you, as we said last week, if you're on a call and your team's on the call with you and you're looking around and most people, you know, everybody's seen it, you're looking over here, we're typing, we're typing, yep. probably they're either cracking jokes back and forth with one another or doing <laughs> something else. So watch their lips to see if they twitch and you'll know. <laughs> I've never been caught doing that. Ever. <laughs> and then reprimanded someone. You made me laugh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never I happened. might have done that this morning. <laughs> so, oh, man. but all, all that to say, when you are an individual contributor, like we talked about in last episode, you've got to have, have control over your own time. As a people leader, your span gets much wider. So you're involved in more things. You get yeah. invited to more meetings. So it's much more important that you understand what's the what's the value of me going to this thing? Why am yeah, I here? For sure. So And if I could, that kind of segues nicely into the second matrix. Um if you're if you're done with your point. <laughs> I think so. I think we said it was the episode of matrices. Um Jess, you want to talk about the Eisenhower importance and urgency matrix, yeah? Yeah. I, I just think this one is, especially for product owners, project managers, um, you know, really especially for any leader. I don't know why I said that. It really is just an important tool to use to kind of help you contextualize what falls within which which little square, right? So if you're looking at the Eisenhower matrix, if you don't know what it is, at the top you have, um, you know, you have four boxes, urgent, not urgent important, not important. And in this top urgent and important category, you have the, you know, red box. It's what has to happen right now. It's the most urgent and most important. But there's also important and not urgent. And those tend to be your strategic objectives. Those tend to be the things that are going to gain you market share long term. They're the investments you need to put into your company to stay relevant. They're the things that are probably the big differentiators. Then you have not important, but urgent. Those are things like, you know, updating your token, whatever. Like these are just tasks that have to happen, otherwise problems, but they're not necessarily super important. Or maybe when I say not important, what I mean is they don't require your specific set of skills. They're, they're not the ones that you are the only person who can do this thing. And then you have the ones that are not important and not urgent. And maybe those are the ones that you go, we put these down. <laughs> these are not things that we need to be spending our time on. Um, and what we were just talking about, kind of defining your role as a leader and understanding where you can make the best impact, doing this matrix can help you figure out which items you need to be personally involved in. So if you have a meeting that's about something that's important but not urgent, then, or sorry, um, urgent but not important, maybe that's something that you delegate to someone else. Maybe those are things you look into seeing, can I automate this away from a human altogether so I never have to touch it again or think about it again? These are the, the kind of category of items that you as a leader probably don't want to fill your calendar up with. 
And they're the ones that are really the big time eaters. So as a leader, it's a really good idea to kind of think through how can I make sure that I'm not spending my time on this busy work item and how can I make sure that we're handling these in the most efficient way possible? And then obviously looking at, you know, the urgent and important and the important and not urgent, those are the ones where you're really going to need to balance your time carefully because important and urgent items have time sensitive deadlines. They're the ones that you have maybe regulatory compliance deadlines that you need to hit in order to stay relevant as a company from a compliance perspective. You don't ignore those. Maybe those are ones like, for example, um, the government put in place that, uh, you know, maybe you had to have a COVID vaccine. And so your company had to implement this thing where you checked for all the employees to make sure that they had their COVID vaccine. It's not adding to your bottom line. It's not giving you any future growth. It's not anything that's actually going to help you as a company strategically, but it is a cost of doing business. Got to get this done. Got to get it done right away. So um, all that to say, there's definitely a lot to think about as a leader, and it it gets a little bit, I don't want to say harder, but maybe more complex as a leader to determine where you want to spend your time and what's going to be a valuable use of it. Yes. And while while Jess was walking through that, I fi- found the sources, so I will post these links in the sh- show notes and nice. in the, the comments on YouTube. What Jess is outlining, so the Eisenhower Matrix is, it's actually on a website called Eisenhower.me. So Eisenhower.me, there and you it, go. it lays it out very nicely. So as she was saying, urgent and important, do those things first. Those are your yep. big rocks. Knock them out. The important but not urgent things. Schedule them at least. Schedule them, mm-hmm. automate them, make them so that you don't forget about them because they are important, but they don't have to be done right stinking now. The urgent and less important, urgent, not important things, those are your delegation tasks. Those are the things yeah. that you know somebody else can do. And potentially it's an opportunity for you to coach up a, a person and bring them more into your world, into maybe more of a leadership role. They're... Yeah. The stakes are lower. So you can you can say, you know what, go go learn, go figure this out. If you screw it up, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> it's we'll, not a huge and, critical And we'll, item. we'll get better. Yeah. And then the things that aren't important or, or, or urgent, don't do them. Put them down. Why are you messing with that? Don't do right. it. And it when you when you start laying things out and so I, I kind of triage them in my head visually because I'm a visual person because engineer. But when you start going through the effort of putting sticky notes of your tasks on the matrix, you start it seems seeing simplistic, but it's helpful. Right. And you start seeing how much of your time is noise. How much of yeah. your time is just like, why am I, why am I doing this? And those are the things that they're irritating. Maybe you don't notice directly. Like you, you haven't brought that up to your conscious brain but you've just been doing these things over and over and over again, probably because in quotations, that's the way we've always done it. But if you start questioning things and you start visualizing things with how much does this move the needle? Well, if it doesn't move the needle at all, probably shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Yeah. There's definitely some self-evaluation that goes into it because again, you know, and especially I think in corporate America, although what do I know? I've never worked at a corporate location in another country, but I know from my experience in corporate America, there's definitely this desire to be busy. Um, You know, there's kind of a, a positive correlation with the employee that always is busy, or there's a positive correlation with the employee who comes in early or works late. And I certainly wouldn't want to disparage those things. I think that, um, you know, that hard work is, a, a positive thing about Americans, you know, we we have drive, we have this desire to prove ourselves and to to succeed and to contribute, and those are all very positive things. Um, however, the urge to make sure you're always busy and make sure you're always doing something can be a flaw if you're not having this self assessment of Am I doing the right things? Am I putting the right things in the lead and leading off with the things that are going to actually make the biggest impact? Or that have the you know the biggest payoff in the short term, so it it, it is a, a very interesting dichotomy. 
Well, that that's why both of these matrices work really well together. Well together. <laughs> yeah. So I found the I found the source for what's called the engineering manager event loop. It was it was a, a talk by a former Twitter uh, director of engineering, David Loftusness, and not Loftus. Um, I, that's my maiden name. You, you <laughs> caught me for a second. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> no, but it, it's, it was a whole talk that he gave and now has been in, introduced into the internet zeitgeist as just this, <laughs> this concept, which is awesome. You know, you can't hope, yeah. hope for more as a, as a thought leader. But right? we'll post that it link so again. so pervasive in the... that nobody knows where it came from. <laughs> exactly. But if you establish these cycles, you don't have to incur the cognitive load of keeping track of, do have I prioritized everything in my brain? Have I, yeah. do, have I put everything on the matrix? You don't have to do that. You come in every day and you say, Really, a, a lot of people will start their day, you know, reading news or, or doing their meditation, quiet time, whatever, drinking coffee, start out with what am I what am I doing today and mm -hmm. and really building context around what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Do I need to have my butt in my chair for eight hours? And is that is that valuable or am I trying to ac achieve some outcome and as you go through these these cadences, if you need to put them put a calendar reminder on, you know every month. That's exactly month. what I was gonna say. That's something that I do religiously. I, if I know that I want to work on X project right after I finish this project in two weeks, I'm gonna put a calendar reminder on for myself just for me to look at to go, hey, don't forget this project. You wanted to kick it off. You wanted to do X Y Z, and I'll give notes. I'll put notes in there and future Jessica is always very appreciative of past Jessica when she does that. She puts links and like documents and <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. The, uh, the other thing that I, I will recommend and I'm going to, I'm going to open my drawer here of notebooks, but if you're a, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I'm a pen person. I like, I like writing. It, it helps me remember things. It helps me keep track of things. But when you, when you make a notebook, you fill it up at some point, right? Keep it. Yeah. You know, don't don't be a crazy hoarder person and you know keep <laughs> all kinds of psycho notes, but keep the notebook because what I found is it's really valuable for me to go back and look at what was I doing a year ago? What was I doing 2 years ago? How was I thinking about things? How was I tracking things? And it helps me see progress because mm -hmm whether you're you're going through this cadence of daily weekly monthly yearly biannually i don't know how to go further than that but if you're going through this cadence you don't want to just be doing the task to do it mm -hmm. you need to see progress you need to see value you need to see did that work and going back to yeah. the, the agile tenants you know we're not just delivering things product increments because we want to we're delivering them because they're valuable when they're valuable because they're valuable yeah so i encourage you whether you're using a one note whether you're using apple notes evernote pen and paper whatever keep track of those things in a way that you can find them intentionally or by happenstance serendipity whatever <laughs> so that you can go back and you can see how is this working how is it how how am I progressing? Am I meeting my goals? Am I growing as a person or in, in the career, in the direction that I want yeah. it to go? Or you can be like me where I am fully digital. I do not write on paper hardly at all anymore. And a lot of people like OneNote and I can fully understand why that is a, a big source. I actually like my brain is very linear sometimes. I like to think things through as a process flow. So doing process flows or putting things into like some sort of a presentation format, maybe in PowerPoint where my thoughts are like a little bit laid out. Those things actually, they it's really nice when you're in a conversation with someone and they're like, well, what about this thing? And you go, oh, I've got a PowerPoint presentation on that. And you pull it up and all of a sudden you have this like thing that you invested time in and now you don't have to do the cognitive work now to refigure it out it's already there maybe with some tweaks it fits better into the situation i mean i've got trainings that i've done for various different things um, that come in handy 
you know, just thinking through like what my division's vision and mission, um, what those are. Um, maybe they sit on a shelf for a while, but they become relevant again. And it can be a really cool experience to be on the phone with someone and they're like, oh, we need to do X, Y, Z. And you're like, I have a PowerPoint presentation about that. Let me show you right here. Yeah, beyond beyond personal development and professional development, keep your artifacts, keep things that you build because, yes. you know, maybe, yeah. the, maybe they're not useful ever again, but I guarantee you, I've had probably a half dozen conversations in the last week where we're we're talking about some initiative. Let's do something. And it's somebody on the call will say, I think I've got a slide deck from when I did this two companies ago. Or I think I've got some notes that I can I can share out from when I've done this before. Because I have to be honest, I've always... never kept any documents from other companies, but I, I mean I, I do I do kind of understand your perspective. I don't think I've ever personally done that though. It stresses me out. I, I still get text <laughs> messages from people that I haven't talked to personally in, in years. They'll say, hey, do you still have that slide from when we did such and such? Yep, I oh sure gosh. do. I found... Now, I do have personal artifacts I put together for like trainings and things like that. Those things oh, yeah. I have definitely hung on to. Yeah, even it, it's been an opportunity to, to network recently. And I know we're off topic from <laughs> prioritization and, and triage, but... It, it actually has been an opportunity to network recently where I, ha I had another engineering leader reach out and say, hey, do you have anything about role leveling in job families? Like, it so happens yeah. I do. Let me share what I've got and see if it's helpful. And so keep your stuff, keep your notes. But to and circle back around. I think it's a around, good highlight. It's a good highlight of how every, like these concepts are not individual to one company. These, these don't belong in one industry. These don't belong in one division. These concepts transcend all of that. And they're just things that you can use. Even, I mean, you could use this in your personal life. You know, the kitchen is something you want to redo, but you don't want to do it until you finish this project. So you're going to put a reminder out there to revisit that topic in two months. I mean, these are just very useful topics you can use to organize your thoughts and make sure that you don't lose sight of the things that are actually incredibly valuable for you to accomplish. Oh, yeah. Listen, my my wife will tell you it, it's kind of obnoxious sometimes, but we have we have OKRs as a family. Maybe. No, that's yeah. so cute. We, I, I may have developed a slide deck <laughs> that I presented on financial goals and financial state of the union. So <laughs> there is value hey, in this stuff. You there's may a significant be... amount of spreadsheets that float around my family. My husband does an incredible job with our finances, like this very intricate spreadsheet he's been using for years, which is really fun because we can look back at like what our expenses were like 20 years ago. And we're like, oh, my God, we were so poor. <laughs> we were babies. Look at this. And then we look at, you know, the exponential increase in cost with children, that sort of thing. Can, it, you can you can easily observe. <laughs> I don't know that I want to see that. Please. You know, it's also... I will tell you just the project manager and me planning vacations. It's a whole thing. I have spreadsheets. I have documents. I have details of each day. <laughs> Packing lists are out of control. It's I a whole thing. I believe that. And if there's not already a mobile app out there, I think you should build it because there's, <laughs> there's probably other psychopaths that also want to do that. I but, my. My thought process is always, if you plan really well, then any surprises that come up, you can work within what you already have established and you can deal with them a little bit easier. And that, that works for working at work or when you're playing with your family out on vacation. These things, like I said, they transcend just this one role that you're in. Well, that is a, that is a good segue back to what we were talking about. <laughs> Make sure that you have systems in place as a people leader yes. to ensure that you're going through the, the, the process every every day, every week, every month, every year to mm. build your own personal health, your personal career, your team's health, your business's health, etc. So this has been episode 12 of Plays Well With Others. I Thank you again for listening. We didn't do the, the plug at the start of the episode, but I really appreciate you making it this far if you have. And if you've made it this far, go ahead and, and give us a like, whether you're 
you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, give us a like, a share, a rating. It really does help, and it helps the helps the algorithm to to help get us out there and get get this podcast shared. Again, appreciate you. Thanks for listening.